My name is Jose Rosado, and I am the Curatorial Associate Collection Manager in Herpetology here at the MCC. Many people have asked me over the years, how did I get involved in reptiles and amphibians? I was born and raised in East Harlem, New York City, and I used to love walking through Central Park and looking at animals and one things. Just amazed by what was there. And people think, well, it's an urban neighborhood and there's nothing there. That's not true. You can find frogs, turtles, snakes, etc. But the thing that always drove me was I was really interested and curious in animals. And when I was in high school, I started a part-time job at the American Museum of Natural History as a photo clerk. And from there, I met the people across the way who were the herpetologists. Next summer, I had a summer job taking care of snakes and breeding them and taking care of the animals in the herpetology division. And I used to see all these workers there in their white lab coats, and I said, that's what I'm going to do when I grow up. Here at the Museum of Comparative Zoology in the herpetology department, we have about 400,000 specimens preserved in the collection. For instance, our amphibians, our frogs, our toads, our salamanders, and a form of animal that most people aren't familiar with, Sicilians. And then we have the reptiles, which is lizards, turtles, alligators and crocodiles, and our snakes, which is a big group. So this is a large anaconda. So this animal is over 20 feet long and would have weighed in the vicinity of three, 250 to 300 pounds. And these are what were called blind snake or thread snakes of the family Leptotyphlopidae. So this is an adult, which is no more than three inches long and about one-eighth or one-sixteenth of an inch thick. People always wonder where all our material comes from, and it's really a very interesting story because it's not one person going out there. Remember, we have been a museum now for over 160, 70 years, and the collections, as they grew, grew from contributions from a tremendous assortment of different researchers. There's a whole process that we go through to actually incorporate, bring specimens into the collection and make them available. First, we make sure it's legally obtained and we have all the documentation. Each of those specimens are assigned a number, checked against our collection for correct terminology in terms of names, the locality information for the specimens, and other materials that might be useful for the record of that specimen. And then we store them in alcohol, 70% alcohol, to prevent any bacterial growth, and then put on the shelves for future retrieval and research. The collection itself contains representatives of about 96% of all the reptiles and amphibians that existed in our world. In other words, it covers the whole world. As we walk through the collection, you might notice the bottles that have red and blue ribbons. The bottles that have red ribbons are called holotypes. The holotypes are the original specimens used in the description of the animal new to science, and our collection holds a very large number of them. Paratypes are secondary specimens used in that same description, and those are the blue ribbons, which actually give you a range of the characters that we're looking at. A lot of people look at this collection and say, well, what are we doing with this collection? And we're just storing them. It's just a warehouse. In fact, it is not. The collections are used by scientists, by undergraduates studying reptiles and amphibians, by graduate students doing research in this area, and also professors who want to use it for their classroom. So it gets a tremendous amount of use from what we call our publics. One of the things that is really added to our natural history collections is the fact that they're now available on the internet. You've got digital images that you can actually download, you can actually replicate 3D specimens that you can use in classrooms, and so you can see our collections and you can see the possibilities in terms of how you can use this information to show what actually exists in herpetology. 